Yeah, I, I mean, it's a pity the, that it's actually true what you say. Uh, Europe has been lagging behind. Uh, I think we are start to catch up now, uh, which is good. Uh, you, we see more and more launches. We see more and more and auctions of Spectrum and so on, which is good. Uh, and we also see a lot of new 4G smartphones, which I think is essential. Uh, but I think it's a volumes game. Uh, th that's why we have been lagging behind. Uh, the US operators were more aggressive. Uh, the Asian operators were also more aggressive on actually getting 4G uh, in air. Uh, and therefore, they, they got the volumes of terminals and so on. Uh, it's a lot better. Uh, I mean, uh, just looking at our website, I, I think I can point at 16 different smartphones today, a few tablets, uh, uh, phablets, and whatever they are called. Uh, and uh, you can even see cameras with 4G. And so it is really happening now in Europe as well. And uh, th there are more and more terminals uh, with the frequency bands on 8, 18, and 2.6. And uh, so, so the progress the last six months or so has been uh, enormous, I would say, uh, uh, when it comes to the uptake. Yeah. Uh, now more and more people have tried 4G, and then they want 4G. They, they want 4G all over the place. Uh, they, they want to bring it when they're abroad as well. Uh, so therefore, we, we have actually been the first in Europe to launch 4G roaming now. Uh, and uh, it, it, it is really essential that we do that uh, between the operators now. Uh, the bottleneck, of course, uh, in, in Europe I don't think it's a spectrum problem, uh, because most of the operators in, in Europe are using uh, more or less the same bands. Uh, but of course, with, with the US situation, with uh, the 700 band and the, the the sort of diverse uh, 700 bands, it is a problem. Uh, and uh, going forward, I, I think we, we also need to look at the, the next step, uh, preparing for, for a new band, like the 700 megahertz band in, in Europe. I think that, that will be really important and that we do that with roaming in mind. Uh, looking at Volta, uh, uh, the, the drivers for some operators has been sort of pure financials. That is the only way forward for, for the voice production. Uh, for us, it's a little bit different. We, we've been using uh, Circuit Switch fallback for a long time now, and it's working perfectly, I would say. Uh, but of course, in the long run, we will also go for, for Volta. But uh, uh, it will be more, uh, I, I mean, there is no clear financial gain in it, uh, but, but when there are enough terminals and so on, I think we can still see the benefits and, and then we will go for it. But uh, we will wait until there are enough uh, terminals on the market for, uh, for Volta. I, I mean, we've been looking at different things and we've been even trialing a few things. Uh, and I think it's really essential for the operators. When, when we go live with something like this, it has to be better what's already on the market. And as you know, there are plenty of OTT players that have services like the RCS and the Join and so on. And at least we need to be on par with them or better. Otherwise, it will not fly. And we don't really see the big drive for it for the moment. So that's why we are sort of waiting. <laughs> I think the operator much must drive innovation, but that doesn't say we should come up with all the ideas. But we should seek and we should scout the ideas out there, and we should make sure that we have an environment for uh, smaller players, uh, startup companies and so on, to join uh, our network, to test the, the, the services and so on. And, and at some point we will find those um, killer applications uh, among that. Some we might come up with ourselves as well, uh, but, but uh, you, you can't say either or. You, you have to go both ways, actually. Um, I think uh, over the next 12 months, uh, we will start to see Volt uh, more and more. I think roaming, uh, there will be a very, very strong push for that now. So all operators need to get uh, started and get, get get the agreements in place and, and so on. So uh, we, we just had the panel discussion down here and uh, the estimate is that within two years, uh, roam, LT roaming in Europe will be sort of the, the normal standard. And uh, I, I, I 
would actually bet on that as well, uh, because uh, the users and our customers will not like to wait longer than that, that's for sure. The, the problem right now is that there, there is an intermediate regulation uh, with the roaming decoupling, uh, but there is also the long-term goal that there should be no difference in the pricing when roaming. Uh, and this goes sort of not uh, hand in hand, because uh, the, the latter actually takes away the need for the first. Uh, but we will spend a lot of time to implement this regulation. And that is actually worrying me, because it will be the same people that would be needed to put their roaming technology into place for, for LTE. I mean, LTE is still very important. We still need to push, uh, and we need to meet, uh, or I need to meet with my peers and so on. And uh, right now, I, I think roaming is the item for me to, to make sure that we get uh, the momentum. Uh, the next step would be the 700 megahertz band in Europe, because I think we really need to get moving there as well uh, to, to get a low band for, for roaming uh, with Asia, with Africa and uh, Latin Americas.